Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the regular meeting of the Nicholas County Board of Education on Monday, March 3rd, 2023. What did I say, March? <laughs> Sorry, today's been a rough week. Uh, April 3rd, excuse me. Um, and at this time, if you'll stand for a moment of silent reflection. very much if you'll join the board with the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, item three, approved minutes of meetings held on March 20th and 28th, 2023. Mr. President, I move that we approve the minutes for the meetings held on March the 20th and March 28th, 2023. Two things on one. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think it's just typo, but I, I don't know whether it matters to you or not, but... Uh, in one place, instead of boost, it says boost. And for uh, the first person on that list uh, prior, it doesn't say what position. I'm sure it's probably kinder boost, but it just says elementary school effective with the start of the program. Okay, where was the first one, Mr. Moose? Oh. Is it on the 20th? On yes. Yeah. All of it's under personnel? Oh, I see. It's a, a summer boost and a summer... Is it what is it called? Summer Boost program? Uh, it's Ken Boost on. I assume Boost is Boost on all the others. Oh, okay. Is there a I Boost see. program? I see what no, you're talking about. Oh, okay. This is a typo. This. Yeah. And what was the other one? Uh, the first one on that list. It just says elementary school effective. with the start of the program. Uh, in the prior, prior, yeah. prior, yeah. In the, uh, effect, elementary school effective with the start of the program. So should they have a specific school? I'll find out with my listening. I'm, I'm looking at that thing. seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. That brings us to number four, recognition, county spelling bee. Runner up.
line up in front of us and have the board to be seen with our students. Rose was unable to be with us, so I, I get the uh, honor and privilege of introducing some very wonderful kiddos to you. We're going to start off with the county spelling bee. We have the runner-up, who is Charles Hall. She'll be here at the next meeting. Okay, high school poetry out loud from NCHS, Jasmine Hobson. And the next one is from Richmond High School. We have Jasmine Jantois as the winner. Yep, that's what happens this time of year. You can take their certificates when you go. Okay, next we're going to start into the County Social Studies first place winners for grades 3 through 5. We have Emma Gunn from Mount Nebo Elementary. Haley Underwood from SES. Brooklyn Cook from SES. Avery Baldwin from SES. Aubrey Dodrell from SES. Tate Gunter from SES. Kylan Palmer from SES. Blake DeMoss from SES. Paxton Mullins from SES. And Blake Kuyper from Blake Creek Elementary. Congratulations. Thank you, Ray. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. 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 Good to see you. Congratulations. Okay. For grades 6 through 8, Shaylee Hilton from SMS. Ready? 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 One, two, three. Okay. Good job. Elena King from SMS. SMS. Molly Dorsey from SMS. Congratulations. Matilda Rodeball from SMS. for Molly. If they have two certificates, that means that they've also placed at regionals. Ooh. Yeah, when I saw that, that's <laughs> Ella Bachman, SMS. <laughs> Candace Deal from SMS. <laughs> Emma DeMoss from SMS. Cora Buckner from SMS. We also have a regional certificate. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. There you go. 
Congratulations. Good job. Congratulations. Good job. And we have Maddie Buckner from SMS. She is at a, um, I think, WBSSAC meeting, and um, Mr. Rick Williams was able to drive back from it tonight, so he, he is on the schedule to speak for Richwood High School, and um, Mr. Bayless is here to speak about the Nicholas County Career Center. So, typically, I go over all this information, then they come back and repeat it all. So, I'm just going to hand this, start handing this over, let them present their information, and then the board can ask questions. Okay, fair enough. If you all want me to change it another way, I'm happy to. But um, if we can start with Mr. Bayless. I don't know if he's using it. Oh, um, sure. Yeah, I didn't figure he was. Just, just so Dr. Teacher and the board knows, uh, all the principals got together and took a vote, and we decided to give ourselves five minutes to speak, and you only give Kevin three minutes to speak tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 this to you, Kevin. Uh, 
<laughs> I'll see you two more minutes together. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, as Dr. Teacher said, uh, we've already talked once uh, with you guys already, so I'll make this as brief as possible. Uh, stick to the questions. So, uh, areas in which we're addressing low performance. Uh, currently, we're getting geared up for a NAPI assessment, but we're going to take it at the end of April. So, all of our teachers are spending about one day a week uh, going through our our assessment guide just to make sure we cover every standard that's going to be tested. Uh, and that's worked out for us in the past, so we're just kind of sticking with that, that same game plan. Um, how we're, uh, way we're working to increase attendance rates. Um, we're just really focused on two main areas right now. The first one is uh, authentic project-based learning opportunities. We're just trying to get as many of those as possible, such as a cabin, uh, swings, catering events, and different things. And the second is just trying to keep a student-centered culture uh, where students just feel empowered to take ownership of their learning. And uh, if you do that in, in combination with our project-based learning, kids just want to be in school. And for the most part, I'm not saying everybody, but for the most part, majority, you know, attendance is not, not really been an issue. Uh, frequency of principal presence in classrooms. I try to go once a week in every classroom. Uh, right now, I am in classrooms as much as possible, trying to get my B&I inspection finished. Uh, if you guys don't know what that is, business and industry, uh, as far as simulated workplace, requires me to do an inspection at least once per year for each of those classrooms. Um, and then the IXL data, you guys have a handout on that. If you guys look, um, I just added the last, the last update on 3.30. And if you look at ninth grade, we had zero uh, above level in, in the county and in our school. In 10th grade, we had one above level in the county and our school. In 11th grade, zero is above level. And this is only in math, uh, because that's all we're teaching right now, uh, Ms. McPherson class. Uh, on level, 9th grade, we had zero students on level at the county and at our, in our school. In 10th grade, uh, three out of three students out of the county uh, go to our school, it's on level. In 11th grade, uh, zero students in the tech center is on level and one student countywide. Uh, just below level, we went from five below level 117 to three below level. Um, then countywide, there's 13 below, <laughs> still below level. Tenth grade, there's two out of five. Uh, five below level in the county, two at our school. Uh, then eleventh grade, there's zero below level at our school and two countywide. And if you look at the right hand column, that's the total numbers uh, enrolled in the whole county. Any questions? What was that uh, the uh, name of the program you were testing there the first, when you first started mentioning? Uh, NOPTI. NOPTI. No. It's our technical assessment. Okay. It's, it used to be work key and it was a NOPTI. It's a national oh. assessment. You're not going to tell us about all those awards you guys cleaned up on? Uh, yes, I, I don't have it with me, but I'm going to bring it from the board this year shortly. We've got one more competition we're doing on April 18th. Let's see how we do there, and then we'll bring them all in front of you guys. Good. Good. But yeah, we've done really well. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Good job. Thank you. Okay, so clearly I should have communicated better with Dr. Teacher because I assumed she was going to go over all the Excel data again, like, and I was just going to repeat it. So I didn't bring it with me because I thought she was going to go over. So I'll get that right next time. <laughs> I thought she was, well, last time we repeated it, and you guys got a double dose of it. So I think we both tried to what help the other out. And, and, yeah. So, but I will talk about it a little bit. Um, so, in the three things that you guys wanted to talk about, um, First was areas of improvement. Our two big ones, we have lots of areas of improvement that everyone does. Two big ones are math <coughs> scores and attendance. Those are our two biggest weaknesses on the state report card. Um, <coughs> math scores, I, I don't know if y'all know or not, but this week coming up is a big week for us. It's the SAT week when we take the school day SAT. We do that on Wednesday. And um, that's for juniors, and that's what they use to determine 
both in math and English, are achievement scores. So um, juniors will take that all morning. To prepare for that, um, math and English teachers specifically have been, we gave a practice test in February. We gave them a, the SAT releases tests, previous ones. Um, we gave some down under normal time circumstances in the groups they'll be in. Um, as close to SAT uh, situation as we could get them, we gave them a practice test. We get a score from that test. That score went to the math and English teachers, and they're going over it, going over areas that uh, they saw. If a lot of kids missed a certain type of question, then they've been trying to drill that type of question a little more. And then each individual kid sees where their score is, and we talk to some of the ones that are really close to say, I promise scholarship to say, look how close you are, a little bit of work here, and we can get there. Um, we were real happy that the state went to the SAT because it's something we can actually sell to the students a little better than we could the uh, GSA test. The SAT has meaning for a lot of our kids. It can earn them a promise scholarship. It can get them into college. I'll call it, if you're going to college, it requires some type of testing. If you've already taken it, it can get you out of needing to take a remedial course. And then if you're a high, high flyer that's already got a promise scholarship, most colleges have some scholarships that are available for certain very high test score marks that those kids can shoot for. And it's a free test that they would normally have to pay for. So it's a little easier sell to our juniors than the GSA was. Um, so that's a good thing. So that's what's been going on on the math front. Um, they're again using the IXL and the Khan Academy and really just trying to drill into that these last few weeks um, to get ready for that test on Wednesday. Um, Attendance is our other area of weakness. Um, one thing we've, that we brought back this year was after a couple years of COVID there was the um, semester test exemptions. Um, that really encourages a lot of kids. A lot of kids will come up to me and say, how many days have you missed? They're trying to calculate their exemptions. If they're exempt, they're in good shape for us because you can miss five days each semester. That's 10 for the year. So if they're exempt by sem both semesters, um, we're real pleased with that. So kids come up calculating that, you know, maybe get them to school in a day that they kind of were feeling great or didn't, you know, might have slept in other, otherwise and they show up. Um, on the other end of that is our kids that are already blowing that out of the water on their absences and we're talking about truancy. Um, we send a three-day letter advising them that, you know, three after three unexcused absences that they have to come, um, that they need to get notes in, we send a five-day letter, and in 10 days, um, they start to talk to Mr. Williams, the other Mr. Williams <clears throat> about truancy issues. And we try to um, eliminate that as much as possible. We're not in bad shape there. Um, there's always some that um, miss a lot. And unfortunately, those are students that, oft that often end up being dropouts and other things, because once they miss enough school that we start getting aftermath over truancy, and they start getting court dates and things, they just, before that starts, they'll sometimes drop out to avoid those types of uh, repercussions on them. Um, and then positively, like Mr. Bayless said, we try to, we're trying to mix it up, keep things fresh, do a lot of project-based learning in the classrooms, um, do some things that the kids like to try to encourage them to, you know, be there, uh, group work and things that, that uh, their other group members encourage them to be there too. So. That helps someone with that. Um, as far as being in the classrooms, we're using, and I brought you a copy because I don't even know if you've seen it yet, we're starting to use this new walkthrough system that was developed, uh, a county-based one. And I'm not going to go through here all that because it's very complex once you start getting into it. But it has a variety of different areas and things we can look for as we do a walkthrough. And I just want to make sure that you guys had seen it and knew kind of, it's, it's on an iPad, so this is all, it's not paper and pencil, this is just a screenshot to print out. So we would select what we see and then track student engagement, we can track um, use of technology, we can track um, teach student in, in use of technology, student use of technology, teacher use of technology, what it's being, not just is it being used, but what it's being used for, is it being used to create products, or is it just being used as an internet browser tool? Um, we can track authentic learning, um, small group instruction, independent practice, 
all the different things that you would have students doing and potentially have students doing in the classroom. And hopefully, in a school-wide basis, you're seeing a little bit of everything. We can't do just authentic learning. We have to do some of that practice and some of that teacher-led instruction. That still has to occur. But hopefully, and we're just getting started with this and working out. We're still going to make some tweaks and changes um, this fourth nine weeks. And then next year, this should be something we have in place from day one, we hope, to um, Adam Hanshaw and several of the principals work together to kind of create this and what we're going to look for. So, so. Do, you, do you go over these with your teachers? I'm going to give them, a, at our next PL day, I'm going to give them exactly what you just saw, what you're looking at, explain all the parts to them. Um, the part right now is just play, basically it's a, it's a sandbox that we're just trying to work out from some deep uh, kinks. I'm going to go over this with the teachers completely and so that they know what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Explain to them that when I come in with an iPad, it's not an evaluation tool. And I always tell them this isn't a value to one the teacher. This isn't part of the evaluation process. That's a separate observation process. This is to help us get better. So I don't want people to get nervous. I don't want them to panic. I just want them to understand that we're looking at this as a school level more than a teacher level. What we want to see, like I said, we should see parts of everything. But over, if I look in every classroom, hopefully I'm seeing some things, you know, some strategies that are more higher level strategies, but you're still going to see some of that teacher-led instruction. You're still going to see student practice at a desk, especially say, in a math class. There's a time when students need to sit down and work out problems and see if they can do it. This so you're still going to see that. You, you, this will take repeated observation. Oh, yes. Yeah. You'll never be able to do it one time. No, no, no. Repeated measures. Um, that's designed, and these are designed for quick walkthroughs, so we may not even look for everything. It'll look at a lot of things. One day we may just be looking at student engagement and just going in every classroom for 30 seconds and looking around and seeing, you know, are these students engaged? Are these students, you know, and, and how are they engaged? Are they engaged in whole group instruction? Are they engaged in small group instruction? And then if they're disengaged, how are they disengaged? You know, if, uh, so does that you do that on the percentage? Yeah, it would be a percentage. So if Mr. Prime's asleep by himself, he's disengaged a lot. But if you know Mr. Barry and Mr. Green are playing cards in the back, they're disengaged in a group. And it will track those types of things. It also track we can also do like away from work. Um, you know, if someone's in the bathroom, they're not really disengaged, but they're away from work at that time. And it's designed to be just a really quick snapshot so that we see you know, 30 seconds in each room, and it can be done multiple times in a day because you're in that so quick. And then you can look for different things in different times. But yes, it takes multiple, multiple, multiple. And teachers get an email. They'll get an email from the system when we send it that says, you know, this is what we saw. So they know kind of what it was. How long are you actually in the classroom? Not very long. It's designed, when we did this, this is a kind of a break off that we made just in the county of what they call power walkthroughs that we had or I walks that we had so we had a, we've used a couple different ones we used one at Richwood High School as part of the SIG process and then the county used another one and they're designed to be quick kind of a snapshot um, in look see note and out um, it's not really an observation so much as it's a walk it's just a quick you know hit, hit in one period I should be able to hit several rooms know what I'm seeing and move on. So it's designed not to take a lot of time um, and to be minimally invasive to the to the classroom and the teacher. Step in the room, do it, leave. And once you get to where you've done this enough, the teachers and the kids don't even hardly, they're just like, oh, it's here, but I get it. And then they just, you know, keep doing what they were doing, which is what you want. You want it to be um, very in, non-invasive to whatever, you know, the kids are doing. And an authentic look at what is going on in the classroom versus if I go in there and sit for 30 minutes, sometimes you don't necessarily see what you what really goes on anyway because you're there for 30 minutes. That's another set of eyes. And I was like, oh, the principal's here. Why is he here? You know. So this is a quick snapshot of you. But that's we we created that, and, and I think it's going to be a good tool for us. You're giving the SAT this year uh, to all your juniors. SAT, yeah. This week, SAT. Uh, and you have get ready to give them the preliminary set, right? We gave the P we give the PSAT in October to sophomores. Okay. So they take it their sophomore year, they take the PSAT. 
their junior year, we, they take the PSAT. And we do the same thing with the PSAT data that we did with the practice SAT test. We disaggregate that data, look at it, and give it to the teachers, um, and they can kind of look at the standards where kids struggle and um, remediate in those areas. So they you kind of have that data from their sophomore year. Mm -hmm. And we do a we're going to do some type of reward system um, like we did last year based on the, from based from the PSAT to look for improvement on the SAT to try to encourage kids to improve. So. I'm excited to see if the IXL is having an impact. On I hope it will. Um, I think it, according to the IXL numbers, I think um, it will. Um, particularly in math, we've grown a lot in math. We have a lot more to grow in math, obviously, being our weakest area. But the math, um, kids are up a couple grade levels on IXL on average. Um, now, that still leaves them sometimes a little deficient, but there's growth. And I think it'll show somewhat, at least on the SAT, or at least I would say. So I'm anxious to see what yeah, I'll be anxious like to that. see how those results, if they mm -hmm. jive with, with what we're seeing on IXL. And then again, over a couple of years, if they, you know, as they get better and better at it, if it, you know, if next year's class and next year's class, we get more and more after they've done IXL for, say, two years or three years versus just one. Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of, as we're flowing it through, I mean, it happened in the middle school and the other schools are... Right, yeah, as they started out, know, just like anything else, when they, when the more used to it they are starting younger, as they get to that upper level, they should hopefully be more benefit than just a one year, like this year's juniors have had it for you know, seven months, eight months. Um, next year we'll have kids that have had it for almost two years. So see, see some gain there as well. I'm glad to hear there's uh, better buying from the kids now on the SAT. The SAT does help with that, yes, versus the GSA. The GSA, it was kind of one of those things where um, it's hard to sell for someone, especially kids that we're taking, you know, we just gave, their ACTs are given in April and May. Um, kids are taking the ACT to get to go to college on a Saturday, and then the two Wednesday before they have a GSA, they were much more focused on that ACT than they were on that GSA. So now I think you're getting a little more buy into the SAT and that it means something to, to them. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that <clears throat> brings us to action items, and we have none, which is unusual. unusual. So that when we're going to look at this phone calls, what are we supposed to? Well, the principals have to have time to go through it. They're on um, spring break right now. They've not had a chance to go through and give me their notes from elementary, middle, and high school. So be, uh, I mean, I'm supposed to work with the principals in bringing this about, so... And then, then we're going to look at changing the policy. Okay. Yeah. So that it fits everybody's. So I think that it may be best to look at elementary separately than middle school, middle school separately than high school, because in talking to some of the different principals, they had different expectations. So maybe next time, or... Well, if, if we can get get everyone together, I can try to have it next time. It just depends on the input from everyone. But no one has their cell phones held, so no one's being, uh, you know, no one, no one's holding the phones. Okay. Okay. Number seven, consent item, uh, consent <coughs> items, finance. All right, we had a uh, payment card in was the first item, and we had a couple of utilities we wanted to get paid as well, so add that. Item 
number two is a contract change uh, to approval of change order number four with Buffalo Transport. Uh, so there's no dollar cost in this change order. Uh, is uh, an extension of the substanti substantial completion date for 90 additional days. Is that under contracts? It's under contracts, yes. Okay. So it was just extra time, no money. Right. Hey, uh, does the uh, Richwood Water and Sewage Bill look a little high? Um, to all sites. Yeah, that would be sites. It says all sites. So. Yeah. It is all. It's multiple locations, so it could be the the Red Brick Gym and the, the Cherry River Cherry River School. Um, you had any water leaks or anything over there, Trey no, River, since the construction started? Yeah. Um, Looks a little high, but I think it's a little higher there. there I can go back to it. It could be possibly a couple months left in there. Um, okay. Let me go. I'll, I'll let That's you know. That's fine. That just, it looked high to me. It might be a couple months. Yeah, it could be. On this que a question on this contract, does that uh, have any, will that have any impact on the potential construction beginning at Nicholas County Hospital? On what now? On the, on the extension of the... Oh, uh, no. Okay. No, no, I think it mentions in there that it would not affect the uh, completion time. Uh, the, the tab okay. would be ready to use at the date already set. So it's a new final completion date, June 30th, 2023. Yeah, they were, I was over there the other day, they were making the dust fly. And by the time they get there, we get bids back and all that. And it's yeah. not anticipated to be awarded for June. Do you have a pretty contract? It's fine. Okay. Is the state kind of slow okay in their bids or the bids? It's out on bid right now. Um, the pre-bid meeting will be oh. April 13th, and bid opening will be May 4th. Okay. But it went through the uh, state? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Item 3 is approval of the purchase of a pasture van for Nicholas County High School. Um, they have requested to purchase a uh, I guess it would be a 10 passenger, including the driver van, uh, a used vehicle for their own use uh, to transport uh, athletics, uh, clubs, um, uh, extracurricular events, anytime they would have a uh, need for a small group of students to travel. Uh, they have the funds to do so and purchase it. Uh, they're looking for a used van. Uh, in the neighborhood between forty and fifty thousand dollars, and we would like to ask permission of the board to allow them to uh, secure the van at some point in the future. If, <clears throat> would the, does the school take care of the insurance on that van as well? It would no. It would be just just have the entire policy. Yeah. And only they our drive, our, only our employees will be driving in, of course, no parents. Have a county tag on, yes. like the driver's ed and everything. Yes. Item four, surplus property. Kevin, do they have to put that out, like, that they're looking for that? Does that have to go out for a bid? Technically, on a used vehicle, it doesn't. Okay. And so, uh, what I recommend for them to do is just do some comparative pricing. So we'll, we'll find one that's a, they're hard to find right now. It's like almost impossible. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I have instructed them, when we get to that point, find what they want, and then we'll shop that price comparatively to make sure that it's a competitive price. And uh, as long as it's a used vehicle, we're allowed to do that without bidding. Okay. Sorry. 
Item four is surplus property. And as you know, we have an auction uh, day after tomorrow at the Lake Creek site at the old Air Evac hangar at 9 a.m. And so we have a few items here to add to that. Um, we have some buses, um, some passenger vehicles, and some vocational equipment, and some older school equipment. Um, so we're hoping for a good turnout on Wednesday. We'd like to add all these last few items in there as well. Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, I thought you said tomorrow. <laughs> yep, Wednesday, April the 5th at 9 a.m. Okay. And so item five is discussion of the school electronic payment method. Um, as you guys know, the state legislature has required us to uh, make an electronic payment option available to the public when they want to purchase something. That any anytime a school has something for sale. And so there are a lot of different options for doing that. Uh, we chose a uh, software called School Cash Online. It's integrated and seamless with our school funds online, uh, our accounting software. And uh, so it's one of those unfunded mandates that we have to do. We're not given any money to implement that uh, or purchase the software, and uh, but it does have some perks to it, uh, which I'll go over quickly. But we do have to pay for that software uh, every year. Uh, it also has a user fee, so the users, the purchasers of uh, the goods and services, has to pay a four percent plus ten cent per item fee. Um, some of the benefits of that, what I like about it is it gets cash out of the school. You know, kids aren't bringing cash or checks to the school. That takes the teacher's time every day to, or ever, however, how often they collect, they have to collect, collect the cash, they fill out what we call a teacher summary form, they total that, um, then they have to find time to take it to the school office, the secretary has to count it, has to be deposited. Um, it can take a lot of time, especially during fundraising season, uh, and teachers are spending time doing that instead of providing instruction. So it's a twofold win. One, it, it uh, increases instructional time. It also reduces um, the possibility of fraud, embezzlement, um, or loss of, of assets. Um, and what I really, I really believe once the parents start using it, they're going to find it very convenient, especially at the elementary level, to go online and pay for any fees or any um, type of event that their child will be uh, going to. But do they pay for it with a credit card? Credit card. It can be whatever card. I mean, I guess you'll have certain cards listed that they can use. Yes, um, I, it's a Visa or MasterCard, right? it's, I know for sure, and it, it may all uh, accept others as well. But it, it's a real great little uh, system, you know, the parent signs on, they identify their child, and then when we enter anything for that child that they need to pay for, it automatically sends a parent an email and says, hey, little Johnny needs to pay for um, a parking pass, or if we, if the school wanted to sell yearbooks, then there's also like a little store that pops up that may not be tagged to their child, but it's available to anybody that has a child at that school. Or just to the general public, if they wanted to sell uh, hoodies or t-shirts with their school logo on it, people can sign on and they can buy those items directly from the school cash online and pay for it. Probably improve sales. It very could, and I think it'll be it'll be convenient. Um, the downside to it, it does have a user fee, and that fee, just like any any other, anytime any of us use a credit card, we have to pay that fee. And uh, 
Now, who pays that, us or them? The buyer. Oh, the buyer. Okay. <laughs> but if you think about it, when you go to Walmart or Sheets or Hardman's, that price is built into every single product already that they assume that you're going to pay it with a credit card. And when you don't, they they make that much more money. But just good business, you have to you have to consider and assume that everyone is going to pay with a credit card because that's a fee or a cost that you're going to have. And if, if you don't build it into your price, then that cuts into your profits. So um, that is the downside. If there's a con to it, it, it does have a user fee to it that is passed along to our parents or the users of the electronic method. Does that, uh, Kevin, does that eliminate each department in the school that has a budget, does that eliminate them doing that yearly report at the end of the year and balancing it? No. They still no. have to do that. Right. right. Does this require additional devices and software? And how much is the cost of the device? It, it doesn't require any additional cost. It, it's just the software cost per school that we have already purchased. But not the devices? No devices, no. No. They sign on through the internet, and just like you would on any other app or website, you sign on to Nicholas County High School and, and find the product that you're looking for, and you pay for it with your credit card. Since this is an unfunded, unfunded mandate, how much is the cost to the county for the software? And is that you have to pay for each school? I have to pay for each number of sites, yes. Um, but I'm not going to see that 4%. It's already automatically in there, right? It's automatically in there, yeah. So, so I, don't, I won't know it. Well, to, give, to give you an example, I'll come back to the question. Oh, give I'm you sorry. an example. Um, Nick, the yearbook may cost, normally cost $60. When now, when you buy it, it's $63 because you have to pay that user fee. So there's just one flat rate that we have across the counter, and yearbooks now cost $63. And so, that's, that's one of the complaints I hear, I've heard a couple of times, is why do I have, if I pay cash, why do I have to pay a user fee? Why, why can't there not be two price, different prices? Um, just like Walmart doesn't have two different prices. It's, uh, it's very hard to maintain and be accountable for two different prices for the hundreds of different items that we sell. Um, not that it couldn't be done, but uh, it, it's really a kind of an accounting nightmare. Um, the software company themselves said that we recommend that you not have two different prices. And, um, and I did a little poll across the, the state and asked, because we're all required to do it, I asked the treasurers in the state, how many, how many counties have one single price? and how many are offering two different prices, a cash price and a credit price, if you will. And the majority of the counties um, that responded have one price. So um, that's the method that we've chosen to use uh, for the time being. The cost, Dr. Penix, um, I have to go back and look. We, we bought this back in the fall. I believe it's like $2,500 a year. For all sites? For all sites. Okay. Yeah. So really additional training? Part of it required additional training? For it did. It was included in that. So we're already utilizing it. Yeah, we, it was required to be in place in March of this year. Okay. So we've, we've already implemented that. Uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people have already used it. Um, so. Uh, well. I'm going to speak up. We've talked. I don't think if somebody pays cash, they should have to pay the same prices as paying the card. That's my, my opinion. Mm -hmm. they um, you go, you go to some businesses, sometimes you go to a business, and they'll say cash or card, and it'll be so much money if it's cash, and it'll be more if it's a card, because they've got to pay for that part of that. Right. So you're paying for it if you use your card. But if you use cash, I don't I don't think we should be, you know, if somebody You're kind of penalized that way. You're kind of penalized if you use cash. And I know I know we're in the electronic stage, but you know, there's some people that 
and still pay the cash. Sure. But I, and, you know, basically going to what the state wants us to do is it's raising everybody's prices. It is. It essentially is. One of the things that once, and I'll, I'll respond by saying this, if, so the principals really, they have control of how they price their items. And so right now they really don't have any type of history at, or trend as to how many people are going to use an online system. And so just if we use the yearbook example, so they put it in there at $60, and by the, after you pay your fees, it's $63. And so they really didn't know, you know, is it 500 people going to buy a yearbook or are five people going to buy it electronically? Um, what I think will happen, or could happen if we maintain one price, is they're going to see how many people use the online system. And if it's not successful, or say 500 people paid in cash and you have five people that pay, use the online system, then they can adjust that price downward um, and still maintain. So say five people would be $15. So in the, in the effort of keeping their prices low, they could still offer that for $60 and take a $15 loss. The flip side of that is they might see that a lot of people are using it uh, on their online system system and, and very few are paying with cash and so then the, then that small group of people are just a minority that have to pay that additional three dollars so what I really think it would be is that as we go and as we get a feel for how much it's used electronically we have the ability to adjust our price for each product where it may not cost sixty three dollars maybe we only need to charge sixty dollars and twenty five cents to everyone, and so it's not that harmful to the people that pay in cash. Uh, so that's that's an option. Um, Maybe I'm not saying it clearly. Yet. Uh, let's just say the cost of the yearbook, I mean, is sixty dollars. And now, if you're going to buy the yearbook and you walk in and say, "Here's sixty dollars. I'm going to buy the yearbook." That's cash that comes to the school, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Another guy says, "Well, I, hey, I'm going to buy it with a credit card. Why is that not when he puts his credit card in or they run it?" It's, that 4% is going to the credit card company, correct? Yes. Okay, plus the 10 cents per item. That should be figured when you put your credit card in there or however you do it, it's it figured on your bill and you get a $63 and 10 cent bill where the person walked in and paid cash for 60 bucks and got, I, don't, I mean, I, I think people, I'm kind of agreeing with uh, Mr. Brown here that um, I think it's a little unfair. So you got to do the paperwork on that. <laughs> What's that? Yeah. So you got to do the paperwork on that. Yeah, we're keeping that. Yeah, we're keeping up with two prices for every single product out there that way. Which I mean, I'm not saying you can't do it, but well, but why would you have to? The credit card company should be giving the report saying sixty dollars and three dollars and ten cents went to pay the credit card company. I mean, I don't, I don't understand that. So, okay. uh, well, I mean, the how would that work? And I know our kids get free meals. But what are you going to do down the road if we don't have, if we have to go back to collect the money for lunches? Well, there are exemptions for um, certain things. So we've asked for an exemption for fundraisers, uh, food service, lunches, uh, concessions. So, okay, so on that line, say some school sells popcorn, you know, once a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. And somebody goes online and pays for it. So is that going to be exempt? Like, If it's a fundraiser, then yes. Yes, if it's a fundraiser. And so most of the re revenues that we generate in the school are fundraisers in reality. And so technically, under, under that exemption, if the state uh, auditor approves that, which I believe they are, uh, then we would, would not have to offer that as an electronic option. Wouldn't a yearbook be a fundraiser? I mean, I guess it could be. I mean, it's a fundraiser. I, I mean, most of the things that we have way. going on is a fundraiser. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I did, the, the only, seems like the biggest advantage is, is the credit card companies. They're making extra money. Or well, cash. And maybe that's... And they've got to make their money. Right. But 
then somebody they pays cash anyway. shouldn't have to pay that same fee. But that's yeah. Well, I agree with it. Doesn't but sound it, like the state did too much thought about this. Sure about that. But if you think about the types of things we're talking about, fundraisers, which means it would be an exemption, Most and they would you wouldn't have the additional dollars tied to it. What about like field trips? You know. Uh, we would take a field trip when I was a Panther Creek. They take one every year. It's so much money. Um, so what if they pay for those with credit cards? Uh, that would probably not qualify as any exemption. It would probably just be a fee that would be exempt. So, you know, sometimes that field trip was, usually it was 50 or 60 bucks. So, and some of those kids, some of those parents would scrape their money together, like save, 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 mm -hmm. for months so that their kid would get to go on that. Now, we always made sure that they would get to go whether they had the money or not, if if they were eligible for it. But, um, you know, I just don't, I don't, I don't agree with it personally. But. What, what's the possibility of using some of our um, levy funds, I'm trying to think of a specific area, that without raising those costs, those fees for this year, let's just say it, it may be minimal. Because honestly, if a school's charging $62 for a yearbook and only five people use a credit card, well, the school is going to enjoy $2 extra off of each yearbook, which goes into their coffers. Well, they're not going to want to reduce that because that's just generated more money for them. It, right, it does generate, and so there, there again, once But the that would be a fundraiser, so they're not going to be paying extra. I mean, it's a fundraiser. A yearbook is a fundraiser. The people, so the $2 extra that they're generating on every yearbook, that, that then, then they can realize, hey, well, we've sold so many more in cash, so we don't have to charge $60. Now we can get away with charging like $58. Well, I'm not sure that's going to be the thought process, because if they're getting extra money, Kevin, are you going to give that extra money back? I would. You would not. <laughs> <laughs> and we can do it either way. If it's the, if it's the, if it's the preference of the board. Uh, well, it's not an action item right now, but we'll come back and give you a proposal. How about that? We can mail us as uses a lot of their coffee shop, don't he? On that. He does. He, he does. Does. They does. won't take cash. Does it work pretty good? You. Yeah, about the tender system we use Square, but yeah, it's the same concept. Yeah, there's no, yeah, you all, you all don't have any option for cash, it's all credit. You know, right. there's no. Yeah, well, we do the same thing, Kevin said, our, our fees are built into the price of items. So you don't even have cash price, it's all? It's all one. Yeah. And that was mainly because you eliminate the problem with students handling. Right, so it's, you know, working by themselves, so I didn't want to have cash, you know, and just, just no cash involved at all, so. And it also allows people to go online. So it's, I mean, we're getting more and more people buying through the cabin system through the, through, the, uh, through the office. So it's it's a good system. I think I think more people will start using it. I mean, that's the day. I mean, we've been in this electronic age for decades now. It's not going to change. But um, it's, I I think most people use that credit card all the time they don't think about that all right and they don't think about the interest that they don't make the payment the time. But I, the, the, the we, can, we can look at it we'll bring something back about that. i just know that if somebody says something's 500 cash and but if you use your card it's 550 i'm going to get the cash <laughs> yeah they do without it yeah we can like i said okay. we can we can do we can handle it both ways um and if that's something, then we'll bring something back to you. Uh, well, what's, you know, the people that's taking the money at schools, What what's, are you hearing from them? Well, no, because they're not handling, they're handing less cash. Uh, and it's really not gotten off the ground a lot. Okay. Um, you know, certainly, I think, I think the teachers would enjoy handling less cash in the classroom, being responsible for less cash. It makes me feel better. Um, not having as much cash circulated through the schools to be accountable for. Um, well, there's, I mean, I'm just thinking most of the time if, if the teachers are handling cash right now, it's for a fundraiser. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, you know, it used to be lunch money. 
Right. That was the big one. Mm -hmm. And okay. Well, we'll bring something back. Okay. You can go ahead and out of state rental travel request. Uh yes. Um, we can find that. Uh, yes, we have eight of those, um, and I believe, let's see here, let's see. we have a couple of, um, we have four out of state. couple of, of uh, staff that will be accompanying the out-of-state trips that um, we will uh, be providing uh, as chaperones. Do you have any questions on the out-of-state driver? Oh, one of the things, I'll speak about this. I think it's important to mention when you see some of the travel <coughs> requests, we have a system that individuals have to ask for um, um, professional leave. And we have some who have asked for professional leave as long as a, let's just say it's the band, as long as the band picks up the substitute uh, cost, then professional leave, um, it's customary to grant professional leave because it's not costing the board uh, fees for substitute cost. Um, some of these that I see listed, um, they've not requested professional leave, which means that if they're in our system and it's not co-curricular, for example, um, Tom Bayless, Skills USA. All of those Skills USA, the Skills USA is co-curricular, which means it goes along with his curriculum. And so those employees need to be there. But if you have an employee from Summerswell Elementary school, school who wants to go, go be a chaperone for them, well, they're not entitled to, you know, professional leave unless maybe Tom says, I've got money in my coffers and I'm going to play, pay for that sub, then okay, maybe so. So some of these, they don't have um, requests in for professional leave, so I'm assuming as you approve these, these individuals will be going, uh, taking their own personal leave. Yeah, we have one example there, a uh, teacher, or, yeah, I guess from Mount Lookout, is going on a band trip. Florida? Yes, she applied for professional leave, and that one is covered under, um, the band will be paying for that, sub, that substitute. So that's why I would support that. We have others, so when, if the band pays for it. So I'm going to give an example of, um, let's just say, uh, wrestling. If you are, um, Wrestling is not co-curricular. Band is co-curricular. Student organizations is co-curricular. So there's a, there's a real difference in sorting through these types of things. But again, when I ask you to approve these and you see some of these teachers' names, um, I do not have professional leave requests for them. Um, if they come back and show us that the band or some other entity is paying for the substitute, there may, some of these may follow up with professional leave requests. Fair enough? Okay. Did I explain that well enough? Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? So the one Mr. Berry was talking about, it says employee requesting travel reimbursement. That was just apparently was a, a typo because on the request it actually has zero. Yeah, and it just says sub cost yeah, only. Zero rate. Yeah, it says zero sub cost only. So apparently when they go through and they, you have to tick yes or no, yes or no on all this stuff, I think it was just ticked. 
uh, as yes instead of the no, which well, is easily done. So, but it says so zero. So is considered as a reimbursed time. So, because it, it's, it's asking, is the county paying for anything, or is there anything being funded by the county? So when they say they are a sub, then yes, then somebody's paying for it. If, if the county's not paying for a sub, then they should click no. Well, it was travel. Right. It was under travel. But well, it should say no. Right. Should say no. Should say no. Should say no on travel. Yes. Yes, that's the one that they made the mistake on. Right. Yeah. But if they have, if they click on travel, then they have to put down a dollar amount. And I if they don't put the dollar amount down, then it, travel cost is not considered. I think where it says other cost associated, it says sub cost only. Yes. Uh, they should put in sub paid for by. I mean, they should say no. Really? Because well, that's going to be something we just need to educate people on because I think that was confusing. And maybe we can even have it expanded to say pay for other than county board. Yeah. And then they could mark that and maybe click options. I think we can revise that and improve that form just a little bit and make it better. Well, you know, you might have a teacher that looks at this and says, oh, well, she teaches here, and she's going with the band. Well, I want to go with somebody. Well, I'm going to do that. And they could, but they're going to have to take their own I know, lead. but if they look at this, they're going to think, well, anybody can do that, which... Yeah, we have several different ones like that that are from different schools that are going with different activities. But like, I know somebody that's going on the Richwood Band trip that's a teacher at Golly River, but she's going as a, a chaperone, but she's... Would have right. to take personal She's leave. She's personal leave. Unless the band pays, right. and then she can become professional. Right. So. And it's, and it's like when I was AFT. AFT would say, hey, we need him a couple of days. They pay you yep. all for my sub. So. Yeah. Okay. So, but that, that stuff doesn't always get um, mentioned in here. I, I just felt like there's so many sh trips going on this year. I wanted to mention that. But when it gets routed, uh, Peggy Gregory is pretty good at catching these types of things, and she automatically bills, you know, the, the band or whoever for certain subs. But we were talking about that today and doing some tweaks on the on our system um, to give just a little bit better information. It would be helpful. I mean, sometimes it's a goose chase to yep. figure out who's paying for the sub. And yep. so we track it down eventually, but you know. It's, after some phone calls and right well i know like when dr lee and them are going out of state they'll say travel paid for by i, I think it'll be simple that was something but that's the only glitch i know of in that one is probably expand that information mm -hmm. thing so yeah i think it would help okay any um any other discussion on consent items finance one two three four five uh, out of state rental travel request one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number five on the finance isn't anything, it was just discussion. Discussion. Yeah. So we have a motion for the consent items under finance one, two, three, four, and out of state rental travel request one through eight. So Okay, we have a motion by Mr. Moose, second by. Mr. Berry, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, personnel. We will be meeting in executive session <coughs> a brief. I shouldn't say that. Don't, Don't say that. I say brief. It makes it long, doesn't it? President, I think we're going to executive session for the purpose of discussing personnel according to the state Okay, we have a motion by Dr. Penix. We have a second. Second by Mr. Green. To come back into, or to come out of the executive session. Motion. Mr. Berry makes a motion to come out of the executive session. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Moose. All in favor? Aye. Aye. At 7:27, no decisions were made during executive session. Personnel. Yes, you have the updated personnel agenda. I uploaded it to your um, board packets. I did make a, a copy available to.
the public and to the press. I will read the changes on your paper. They are in red. Under professional, Heather Sigley, employee in the position of itinerant elementary school counselor for Nicholas County Schools, effective with the start of the 22-23 school year. Donna Green, employee in the position of special education teacher for Cherry River Elementary School, effective with the start of the 23-24 school year. Under service, Rachel McMillian, employee in the position of long-term substitute transportation instruction aide at Mount, Le Mount Lookout Elementary School, effective April 10, 2023. Deanna Smith, employee in the position of halftime cook for Somersville Elementary School, effective at the direction of the child nutrition director. Joyce Hammock, employee in the position of cook at Cherry River Elementary School, at the direction of the child nutrition director under professional extracurricular. I did not receive an app, um, a recommendation for the temporary support staff softball for Somersville Middle School, so I removed it from the agenda. Stacy Hutchinson, employee in the position of Kinder Boost teacher at Cherry River Elementary School, effective with the start of the program. Under service extracurricular, Deanna Smith, employee in the position of Summer Soul Cook for Zila Elementary School, effective with the start of the program. Alicia Mitchell, employee in the position of Summer Boost Cook for Birch River Elementary School, effective with the start of the program. Tim Deal, employee in the position of Kinder Boost Transportation Instruction Aid for Cherry River Elementary School, effective with the start of the program. We have removed the Summer Boost custodian position. We will be reposting it. Under consent, um, added three names for volunteers for Nicholas County Schools, Ginger Altizer, Steve Altizer, and Christopher Neff. On page three, there are several uh, leave requests from employees. I will not read those aloud um, to protect their privacy. And then on page four is an updated um, vacancy list, if you have any questions there. Have any applicants for those vacancies? Uh, which vacancies? Any of them. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Well, the ones that we had posted, we're hiring the social studies tonight. It's on the agenda and also the special ed at uh, Cherry River. So in the rest of these, we will be reposting once the board approves the um, roof transfer plan for the next school year, which we will have on the 18th. Uh, should Deanna Smith's on there two times. Is that yeah, the one is a summer position and one is a regular position. Oh, okay. Chris responded with a whole line of laughy faces. <laughs> Principals usually are, they're usually the ones that, um, that pick the subs for those vacancies because they try to find retired retired teachers to, to place in those that are certified. So um, those are those are filled with, with subs at the moment. Oh, the principals can do that? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yes. we don't do it from here. It's the yes. Principals. I mean, if they ask for assistance, we help them, but, but typically they know who they want to to, to fill in for. Any questions? Any other questions? I need to leave the room. Um, we'll vote on everybody except Yeah, when we go to vote on it, you're supposed to leave the room. Yeah. Yes. But we'll vote on Is that new? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Go ahead. That's what they told us, right, Dr. Penix? At our last oh. training. Mm -hmm. I do. Okay. So um, 
we're, we we will not vote on Donna Green. We'll, okay. So we have a motion to accept the personnel agenda, except for uh, Donna Green. So moved. Second. Motion by Dr. Penning, second by Mr. Moose. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, Mr. Green, if you step out. Don't go too far. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, do we have a motion to, or any discussion on Don Green? Okay, do we have a motion to accept Don Green uh, as presented? So moved. Second. Motion by Dr. Penning, second by Mr. Berry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So he, um, so he's abstained. Abstained. That's how I show it, just yes. abstained. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you tell Mr. Green to come back in, Mr. Hess. No, no, we come back in and vote for the rest of them. We've already voted. We did. We you already voted, voted for the, the one. There wasn't discussion. That's why he could be here for the first part. For this one. Hey, just in case y'all missed it, Dr. Penning said you all were freaking out. We hear that, Green. That's him. That's why they walked back in here. I told her if it wasn't real, she was letting her. No, no, no. I didn't agree with that. That was his idea. <laughs> Okay, um, approve the following volunteers for Nicholas County Schools. Where's the name? They were on there. That, that was on, on, the, that was on the personnel agenda. Right on the personnel agenda. Oh, well, I'm, okay. We're on the, never mind. Number nine, I did. Number nine, superintendent's information, construction, planning, architectural update. On Thursday, the uh, bids for the Glade Creek project I went out in um, the Gazette and was um, should have been on our local paper and then uh, this Thursday it will be published again in both locations and on April 13th we will have the um, the pre uh, construction meeting pre bid meeting uh, and then on May 4th there will be a bid open for Glade Creek um, things are continuing to move with the uh, uh, Cherry River project. Um, they're, you know, wor working inside. They've uh, pulled up, you know, tile. They're trying to get all that prep for the remodel in the areas of the school that's not being used. Um, they've continued to do um, earthwork on the property. And uh, playground looks really good. Uh, I know we're waiting on one piece of um, metal that was being fabricated. We should have received it Friday, so I have to check on that for one piece of the playground equipment, then it will be installed. And we're waiting for um, guidance from our architect as to the preschool equipment because we'd like to go ahead and get it put up. So we've been told a location that it can go, uh, the location we've known from the beginning. But um, there's been some conversation that it may be in the way. So we have to get that confirmed before that gets set up. But I'm hoping to get that up soon as well. Um, you know, everything's moving what, along. Uh, what uh, did they do with those silo foundations? Or did, are they going to use those to cover them up? Or? Oh, no. Um, Basically, the guidance provided by our architect to um, the contractor is that um, they are required to dispose the, legally dispose of materials from the site. So that's something that... Can't be part of what's all wrong. Well, that's their responsibility to determine the legal disposal. And then when things are hauled from our site, um, there's load tickets, so that means that each ticket has to be signed off on, it has to tell what materials um, are on the load and where the load is actually going. So, you know, it's a, it's a tracking method, it's actually called cradle to grave. 
So that's what it's referenced as on all our FEMA um, documentation. So that, that means from the beginning of where the dirt was moved to its final resting place. So there, all that has to be well documented. And um, again, the, the architect gave guidance. Um, that's their legal responsibility. The contractor's legal responsibility. The contractor's legal responsibility, yes. So um, back to the pre-bid and the bid opening. Yes. Right here at the board office, or central office. Is that what yes. that's going to be? Yes. One o'clock? I think. I think it's at one. Okay. I think they're at one. I think. And then we have a um, bid opening also for the um, utilities package going into Glade Creek as well. So there's utilities that have to be pulled, you know, but into the school. So there's a bid out on that as well. And it, and I think it may be at 10. On now what's it? Day. The fourth, same day. I'll have to oh, show. The huh? Is it the 13th? The, or the bid opening? The bid opening. Uh, Both of the bid openings are on the same, the same day. day. I uh -huh. okay. Well, I, I thought the bid opening, you said May the 4th would be the bid opening. That's it. Yes, that's correct. And April 13th would be the pre bid. Yes. That's just okay. on the building. That's on the building, but there's a, there's a, a utilities package as well that's out. But the only, the only pre bid meeting is on Nicholas County's building. That's what I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you. I'd have to go back and look. There's so much to go through. It, 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 we may have a pre bid opening on that one as well. So you'll let I'd us have know. to look. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. So is it 1 o'clock? Uh, I think it's at 1, yes. For the pre bid opening. Both, for both the pre bid and the bid, 1 o'clock. Think so. I think that's what was on that so. call, but it so. wasn't today, it was last week, right? Mm -hmm. Any questions for the superintendent? Um, are you all still working on that junk that's parked on the Ridgewood campus? I noticed this truck was gone, so I don't know where he's at. So we gave uh, notice. So that junk is illegally parked. And um, Alan Stump went to the city police and asked them um, to give us information or to if ask if that he could help. And he said yes he could. He knew the gentleman who owned it and and who owns it and he would and he's Alan told them that we needed that removed immediately. He did not have permission to have a park there. So anyway, the officer said, I will take care of it. And if it's still there, is it still there? Mm -hmm. Has been touched, I don't think. No, it been maybe more added. I'm not sure. I know I, I took a picture. <laughs> it's hard to keep up. But. Um, We can try to have it um, listed as abandoned. We can maybe, um, we can ask the, um, you know, the officer, I mean, since he didn't move it, Alan did speak to the officer, we can ask the officer if he would be willing to uh, charge him for creating a dump on our property or for illegally put, you know, if the officer will charge him um, to try to make him put it up. I mean, trespassing, I'm not sure what the officer may be willing or able to do. Just get a scrapper to come in there and get it. Yeah. Well, if we have it declared as abandoned, um, that's quite possibly what I, what I suggested, that we could actually have it declared as abandoned and then us take everything on that property and remove it. John, prices right metal. now? Metal. Oh, really? There's metal, there's all kinds of hot water heaters. So nothing has been removed? Not that I know of. Yeah, it was really my understanding that people were being misled if we gave permission. We did not give permission for that to be there. That was a rumor I heard, so. Yeah, we, we did not ever give permission for stuff to be stored there ever. And I don't want to, one of the challenging things is I don't want to block it off because people park there. Or they did before, you know, if you have a big event, they can pull in there and park. But if we block it off, it's going to keep everyone from parking. 
Well, and they could park there. I, if they hold your graduation yeah. outside. Yeah. And you don't want that mess there for graduation. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So. And prom either. No. Prom come up. Mm-hmm. Well, what's happening with the war? Well, we're in the high school, you know, up near the football field. High school gym. The walk. That project is a FEMA project, and they. I guess they're progressing on it. One of the things that I questioned was the um, gravel. When I went up and looked at it, I made a call back to the SBA and spoke with them, and I said, um, when will the paving occur on the uh, gravel walkway? And um, apparently they made some type of error in their bid and I presented their memorandum of agreement that we all received and um, I said well that's not what this calls for it calls for paving and there's no way that's ADA compliant and it's not possible I mean it's not even Alan said he walked it and he said it's not even easy to walk on no. and so um, the SBA did I did sit in on a call and the SBA did bring it up to FEMA and told them that they were going to have to make an adjustment so that's that's the project a lot of people don't understand, but it's a FEMA project. They held the meetings. They did the entire plan. SBA was involved. Um, Nicholas County Board have one signatory, and the Historic Foundation, and you know all these other people were involved in it. So it's not our project at all. Um, even though I did try to take it on myself to fix some of those signs that were. It was listed as Nicholas County Walking Trail instead of Richwood High School Memorial Walking Path. So caught some errors that I was able to fix or get fixed. Um, but one of the things I did talk about today that I would like to do is we need to get something up around that exterior part um, to keep people from running over and destroying the, um, the walkway when it's, you know, everything when it's completed. Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and look. I can't remember if we're obligated to maintain it for two or three years after completion. But at that time, that's something I think the board may want to consider asking um, the city or another. If the city doesn't want it, maybe um, a 501 c 3 to be donated, donate that property to, to them. Um, and then we no longer maintain it. But we, we have to maintain it for a certain period of time. I'd have to go back and look at it again. I don't recall what the time frame was. But I think that's something, you know, the board might want to consider doing. That was, what, three hundred some thousand dollars for a track? Oh, yeah. It's really, and it, it's, it was bid out twice. And it, it's, it's not three hundred thousand dollars track. It's nothing. We could do it. I could do it with a wheelbarrow. <laughs> it, it, it was bid out two times. Yeah. It was bid out two times, but it's not coming from our money. No, no. Yeah, but it's still. I, I agree. I mean, I looked at it and I was like, I can't believe this. But it was bid out twice, and there's time frames on getting that stuff completed. And we ended up having to send the bids out, which is not our project. So that's when I went back and said, Why am I sending bids out? Why are we involved at all? It's not our project, but it's on our property. Um, but we didn't have any say on what got constructed or how, I mean, we had say, I, I tried to get it developed like the, the, the park up in Webster County with the pavilion stuff. I, I advocated hard for that, but that's not what the folks at the time that were on the committee wanted. They wanted that trail, so that's what they got. Um, but. This is actually being managed by the SBA. Yes, it's managed. They designed it. They managed it. It's not our project. But, you know, in the public's view, I'm sure it's our project. You know, I understand that and I'm sympathetic to that. So, I mean, I'll answer questions and do the best I can. And I do try to advocate for um, the community to make sure that it looks right and it's what it needs to be. But Three hundred thousand dollars. Oh, yeah. Three hundred ninety. It was like three eighty or something. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it was high. Remember. Yeah. It was high. Yeah. Did we have to approve that to the board here? Yeah. I remember. Yeah. It was. It went out two times on bid. And yeah, so I, I remember that, but I couldn't remember how much. Oh, it was super. It, yeah. I think it was about three eighty. We contacted the SBA and asked them about it, and um, because it went out twice, two times it, on bid. What? Who made it? 
Good jack to that was high. Well, yeah, that was just it. That was the bid. We we put it out twice. No one bid on it the first time. And the second time we only had one bidder. Bid. And it get and then what we were told was, well if you've put it out twice, it is what it is. I mean that would just be like you know, the Ridgewood project, okay? We put it out twice, the bid came in 12.5 million over. You can't keep putting it out, so it's the same with this track. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you can't, the bid, it, it is what it is once you put it out a couple of times, but I don't understand it. Someone said that it was the price of the trees that made it very expensive. There's a really expensive um, wood, like the timber, that was brought in from Oregon. Super expensive stuff that they used. Is it there? I haven't seen it. No. Supposedly, it's something to do with uh, uh, the pedals, the signs. Are the signs up yet? They weren't up when I got there. Oh, no. Okay, so it's supposed to be like the pedestals or something for the signs. It's some kind of real expensive wood brought in from Oregon. So I don't know. I've inquired because people have asked me questions and I've tried to answer. But I can't, ex I can't explain it. I mean, I, but the price is is what it is and now they're going to have to figure out what they're going to do about paving it or is there one anyone from sba that come in and can come here and address that and we can ask them questions the one that's managing the project i wonder i can i can certainly request that i mean i, I think there are questions that need to be answered obviously they're being asked here this evening yeah hopefully it's not paid for <laughs> well that oh, that project the project that they bid out they bid, this contractor did it exactly as the project was being. Wasn't well, they paid on it? Well, I mean, he would be entitled to be paid because he can't help it if someone made a mistake on how they rate the bid specs. Yeah, but if, it, <coughs> if it's, he, he would be required for the signage. Never. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah he so hopefully they required. didn't pay him yet. Hopefully somebody from SBA comes up here and says, yeah. Well, the SBA ready. went up and reviewed it last week. So they, they are inspecting. They're keeping an eye on it. Um, but when I brought it to their attention about the the, the gravel, um, I don't know how they missed it. I don't know what happened. Uh, but I did present them a copy of the agreement. I said, this is a copy of the agreement. This is clarification that I asked for. Um, clarification that you know this board is under, you know not responsible for any of it. it's not our project I had all of that clarification and I presented that to them and I said and it has always said that it's supposed to be an asphalt surface so I can ask but like I said I'm advocating that's all I know to do because an eight mile track is what four foot wide Something like that. It shouldn't take more than ten, twelve thousand dollars for pavement to do it. Well, oh, that hundred, three hundred eighty thousand. I think it was. I think it was. Wasn't it twenty six thousand on the pavement over at Panther Creek or something? So I don't know. I don't know, but I know that the FEMA did, or I know SBA did tell FEMA that there would be a slight change. So I don't know if they're doing a change order. I don't know if they're bid it, making it a new bid i don't know what they're doing they haven't told me i've just been inquiring and like i said when i visited i noticed and that what that's what alerted them did, did one panther grid get straightened up enough to be used it well the pavement's done but um the dirt the, still, it's volunteers are supposed to be uh leveling the dirt so it has not been leveled <coughs> So the pavement turned out pretty smooth. Um, I think it's. I think it turned out okay from what I'm being told. I mean, I looked at it. I mean, it looks like any other walkway that we've got, any other track we've got. Um, is there a, a deadline for completion on the Richwood project? On the walking trail. On the walking. Trail. Yes, there's had to be. We've had to ask for extensions uh, for the completion of that walking trail. Yeah, because it went in phases. The first was um, the memorabilia to be placed in the, uh, where we worked all that out. It had to be placed in the library. There was shelving built with the Richwood memorabilia in it at the library. Um, and then the other second part of the phase was building the track with the trees, benches, 
the two benches um, that um, was sat in front of Richwood High School was to be moved if possible. And after the architects looked at it or the contractors, they said if you try to move those benches, that they they will break. So I said, then don't don't break them. <laughs> Just put new ones out. So you know they're supposed to be putting some new benches there. They don't have to be replicate what's currently there, but just some some benches. Do we know that deadline? I can't tell you right off the top of my head. Um, we've been following it. We've been... It's just a very odd situation. Um, well, I, 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 if the SBA is in charge of it, and I, I, did they ask for the extension of time? Was it SBA that asked for that? They asked, yes, SBA SP. asked for the intention, the extension. Kevin always prompts them. We try to keep up with it, even though it's not our project. You know, Kevin is one of the ones that's continuously monitored that and said, SBA, you better ask for the extension. You might want to ask for the extension. So um, he, did, he did do that. And we've had to have several, or they had to have several. Well, I, I, and it's just, a lot of it was, I think, because of um, when it was originally designed by SBA, it was designed in the floodway. And when it was determined it was in the floodway, you're not even allowed to put a walkway in the floodway. So when um, the contractor got it and realized it, not the contractor, but the architect got it and realized it was designed in the floodway, he brought it to their attention, and the designer said, um, well, they weren't sure what happened. So then they had to go back in and do a redesign and shorten the track and place it up in the location it's in now, which is not the best location because it's not, you know, where the high school was. But that was the only location they could put it. So then it went out to all the signatories again to review with the new track design, the length, and, uh, and during that time when I found the errors on the... Um, on the signs, um, I contacted Tom Bayless and I asked him if he could please have Lundy Bailey look at that and see if he could do some proper designs. I got a group, some folks from Richwood to look at it and said, you know, look at this. Tell me things that you think need to be added. And we worked, they changed. I didn't do it, but they worked it up. They wrote really good stuff that represents Richwood well. It, it, they turned out t ten times better than what they were. Lundy's designs were excellent, and so that's what um, we got redesigned and turned back in, and then all the signatories reviewed it, and they accepted the new designs. So it was Richwood folks that put it together instead of the original one was done by someone in Charleston, and it was, like I said, it was called the Nicholas County Walking Trail. And, um, <laughs> But, but here's the issue that I think that, yeah. that I'm concerned about. I mean, I, I, okay, well, where we are right now is we have gravel down over there that should have been pavement. Is that true? Correct. Okay. Now we also know that the it sounds to me like the contractors already been paid for this work. No, I, no, I didn't say that. Okay, well, I mean, I'm just saying is that okay? That's not true then. Okay, so. What, what's being done in the process to get this corrected because the pavement needs to be done? I brought it to SBA's attention. Yeah. SBA brought it to FEMA's attention. And that was last week. SBA told FEMA that there was, they were going to have to do a, a slight change. But in the phone call that I was on, they did not discuss that change. But so, they did make them aware. What, so SBA's made FEMA aware, so... I guess the change that they're going to ask for is FEMA to give more money to go back and do That's that. between them and FEMA. Okay, right. And the understand. only other way, in my opinion, the only other way that could change and it stay as is, is it would have to go back to all the signatories again, and all the signatories would have to agree to leave it as a gravel walkway, which would not be acceptable no. in, in any way because it's not ADA compliant. It's who... I mean, that's not a proper walkway. It's not. Um, but that is between FEMA and SBA. Gotcha. Uh, but uh, so SBA, they're, they've got, it's in their hands. I mean, that, it's it is, it's and they know of the problem, and they've talked to the architect. I know that they've all talked, but since it's not my project, they don't communicate with me really about it. 
I've called and asked questions just because it's on our property and it's in our community and I need to know and be able to answer questions. Well, they, I just think it would be best if they came and would address this because we need to know how that's going to be corrected and when it's going to be corrected. I can request. I do not know if they will come, but I will, can request that. That's, that's why these public projects cost so much. There's not any competency out there. Nobody takes hold and does the job. No know? checks and balances, huh? Yeah. yeah. Either that or too many sometimes. Yeah, well. That's what we encounter. <laughs> yeah. Okay, does anybody have any other uh, questions for the superintendent? If not, let's go to reports. Dr. Penix, SESC. We have not met and will not meet again until, what's the day, the third? Uh, about 15. Okay. We'll again soon. I'll get back to you. All right. Mr. Green, Brian Horizons. I have nothing at this time. Okay. And I don't believe we have any delegations. <laughs> Items for future agendas, anybody? Obviously, the update on what's happening with this track is going to I have um, invite SBA to explain the uh, walking track, um, future agenda, cell phone policy. The other future future agenda is um, a proposal for the online purchases. Those are three things. Okay. Future meeting dates, regular meeting Tuesday. Per West Virginia Code, April 18th, so you guys make a special note of that, uh, it'll be on Tuesday. <clears throat> we also have that reconvene meeting on Tuesday as well. So. Right. So we'll do the reconvene meeting I first. I that listed twice, shouldn't I? Okay. Dr. Penix would do the reconvene meeting first, correct? Mm -hmm. And then adjourn. adjourn it and then open the other one. Mm -hmm. Regular meeting Monday, May 1st. Uh, 2023 right here at the central office and Monday May 15th at the central office we've also set aside April 17th for personnel hearings over RIP transfer so as as we get those requests in I'll be in contact with the superintendent and the president to, to get those schedules for that day the 17th if you have I'm sorry did you say a time on that um, we or? we set aside the entire day. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So we'll. I mean, if it's if you'd rather have them in the evening, we'll start them in the evening and, and work backwards or, or whatever. I I honestly don't anticipate any. Honestly, um, I may be surprised, but from when I met with the folks on Friday, everybody seemed to understand and and to be okay with the changes. So. April 17th. So if we don't have any requests from, if we don't have a request. That day. I've got, I can't be there on April 17th. Can you be there that evening? Uh, no, I, I have to be at the Austin Pathic School at 5 o'clock that evening. Could you do it during the morning? But one, yeah, I could do it in the morning. In the morning. Yeah. Okay. And, and if there are, if we don't have any requests for a hearing, we, we may not have any. What time would you need to be out of here, Mr. Lewis? Uh, well, how long does it take to drive to Lewisburg? <laughs> I, I, have to be, I have to be there ready to go by 5. You'd so be safe if you left by 3. 3 o'clock? Yeah. yeah. Well, you, that shouldn't be a problem. You'll still have to go by the visitor center and get more snakes and stuff, won't you? Pardon? You'll still have to get loaded up, won't you? Oh, yeah, I'll be ready to go. I can, I'll leave from here. Yeah. Does that mean you're going to have snakes in your car? Yeah, the ones I don't put in your car. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, okay. we can end by three. I, I, we don't. If we even have any. If we have any. Okay. What, now, what was the date? April, April 17th. 17th. I, I'd like to ask also, uh, I've, the graduation dates are published in the little catalog, but are there any other events as we get, you know, the school be determined? I'll send out. You'll get a list I'll send it out. I'll get a, send, I'll get a list. Yeah, get list. list. Now, running list. Let's see, the Nicholas County High School graduation is what, the 21st of May? Yes. 
Uh, one of them's on a Sunday and the next one's on a Monday. Right? Uh, 21st is Nicholas County High Schools and the time has changed from 7 to 4 p.m. Is that a Sunday? Yes. It's at 4 p.m.? Uh -huh. Okay. And then Richwood High Schools is on Monday and I still show it as 7. But I'll verify those times in your list. Okay. Super Scholars will be May 11th. Super Scholars May the 11th. And you is will, that NCHS? Yes. You will put a list out. Yes. Sir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> May 11th. Yeah. Actually, I just thought about that today. Yeah. Super Scholars 7 p.m. I didn't write the time, but I okay. think. You'll get that. Is it 7, Donna, or 6? I don't remember. I think it's 6. It's usually 6. I think, I think it's 6. six. Yeah. But I'll verify all that and get, it, get you guys an email out. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, anything else? Do we have a motion to adjourn? I so move. Mr. Barry makes a motion to adjourn. I'll second. Second by Mr. Green. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 At 804. Aye.